Great. Thanks, Megan. And um, hello, everybody. Uh, I think I know some of you and others. Um, I know people at your firm um, who I sent the invite to because I thought um, you might find some value in it. So I'm just going to start by telling you a little bit of background of the kind of genesis of this webinar. Um, as some of you may know, I was um, in legal marketing in-house for about 20 years. And one of my roles was with Kane L. Gates a uh, 2000 lawyer firm on uh, five continents, 48 offices. And when I was director of business development there, one of the tasks that my firm had given me was to overhaul how the firm um, set up our RFP response process. And, you know, we were a big firm, so we were doing about 200 RFPs a year. Um, and for a billion dollar company, uh, I was pretty amazed at the lack of technology that we had on the um, response side. Um, in fact, I was typically using, uh, like our standard language repository was a Word document. Um, we did a lot of the tracking in a, in a generic Excel document. And, you know, a lot of the BD managers throughout the firm um, were really just using like prior RFPs. So, they had a couple that they liked and they would save them on their desktop or, you know, they would float around between um, the marketing department of, uh, of, of good kind of sample RFPs to use. But I knew that wasn't the most, you know, efficient way. But at the time, I just, I, you know, we, didn't, we never really um, took the initiative to move to something, you know, more sophisticated. Uh, and when I left in-house marketing, I created my own consulting company. And one of the things I do is I help companies issue RFPs. So I started looking at the software that was on the market for issuers. And what I realized was like, wow, there's a really big breakthrough in how much easier it is for a company to issue an RFP now than it was, you know, five years ago. You know, a lot of the ones that I used to respond to, you know, a lot of them were PDFs, a lot of them were Word documents. You know, some of them were through an Ariba portal, but generally speaking, um, you know, they, they used to be very, you know, old fashioned. And now, um, you know, there's a handful of products on the market that allow general counsel or legal, op legal operations folks to issue RFPs much quicker, to grade them much easier, and to have like their entire legal team collaborate on grading the response in a much more efficient process. So when I saw that was going on in the issuer side, I said, geez, you know, there's got to be something out there for the responders that's helping folks. And um, I got to meet uh, Pat, Chris, who's going to be co-presenting this webinar with me, as well as some of the other folks at RFP360. Um, and I started going through their software tool for um, RFP responders. And I was kind of blown away by some of the technology that's out there to help um, companies now that wasn't there, you know, five or 10 years ago. Um, you know, so for me, um, you know, some of the things that I think you want to do when you're managing the RFP responses is, um, you know, you want to collect all the knowledge. So you're somewhat in charge of managing the, the data that's used for standard answers or, or, you know, best practice answers. Um, but you also have to do a lot of project management where you're getting, you know, lawyers to respond to internal deadlines or you're getting, you know, your security um, person to sign off on, you know, a certain part of the RFP by a certain date. So there was, you know, there was the knowledge management, there was the import, um, uh, you know, and, and project management of the piece. And then this is where I think a lot of law firms, including my old firm, really weren't where we wanted to be, but, you know, how do we use technology to measure performance, you know, collect the feedback, trace revenue, and really then be able to report back to your CMO or your management committee as far as how the, R the, the firm is doing with RFPs. So that's my little intro piece to kind of let you know how we got here. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Pat, and he's going to run through – um, some of the things that his software does and how RFP responders are using them to, um, you know, increase the efficiency and get better results. And what I'm going to try to do is add my two cents in, 
while he's, you know, present, while he's showing you um, the product, if I see things that I think um, you might find particularly uh, valuable in the legal industry, I'll make sure to highlight that. And then once Pat's done speaking, we're going to kind of circle back and, and do a little bit more of a, a Q&A. And, and I'm going to, um, you know, moderate some questions for him on things that I think you guys might uh, find valuable. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Pat and uh, take it away, Pat. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate the intro. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. Appreciate the time. Uh, as Matt uh, mentioned, my name is Pat Chris. So I run the sales uh, organization here at RFP 360. Um, I do come from a legal tech background. So previous to RFP 360, uh, I worked for a legal tech company called HiQ and uh, ran their corporate legal team in conjunction with my CMO at the time that now is the current RFP 360 CMO. Uh, ran uh, a lot of the uh, needs analysis for the law firm side. So um, one of the big things that drew me to RFP 360 was I understood not only the pain and need associated with answering RFPs as, as a sales professional, but I also understand the proposal landscape that both uh, corporate legal teams as well as law firms uh, see as means of selecting outside counsel and as means of uh, law firms winning new business. So uh, in terms of just kind of what we're going to walk through from a, uh, a slide perspective, I wanted to get everybody a little bit comfortable with who RFP 360 is as an organization. Um, the main theme of today's webinar is really just to get you introduced to the technology that's out there in the marketplace to help you. Um, and uh, we want to start with get you comfortable with us as an organization. So uh, RFP 360 has been around for, for uh, quite some time, so coming up on 10 years now. And the genesis of the platform that you'll see here shortly in the demonstration was two co-founders that were roommates. One worked with an organization that issued RFPs, and one worked at an organization where he had to respond to RFPs. And at the dinner table, they just decided there has to be a better way to not only unite buyers and sellers, but also to create some efficiencies and modernize the way RFPs are written and the way those proposals are submitted. And that was the culmination of RFP 360. And since then, we've been fortunate enough to grow to uh, an organization with you know, over 23,000 users across 500 uh, plus organizations. Um, you know, legal is a big vertical for us, not the only vertical. Uh, we're fortunate enough to be across many industries as the pains associated with uh, proposal management is uh, uh, ever reaching uh, across broad industries. You know, Matt alluded to the fact that he started um, to get his introduction into RP360 on the issuing side. So um, we're unique in the sense that we are the only provider that has a solution for both issuing RFPs as well as responding to RFPs. Um, you know, today's webinar and demonstration is focused on the response side, but I think it's important to call out the real benefit to our responding customers uh, in the sense that we truly understand the full life cycle of that RFP. So when we sit down and build these purposeful built features and solutions for our responders, we do that with the consideration that we get from our issuers, what the issuers are looking for from our proposal respondents, and being able to understand that life cycle not only brings life um, to our logo and to our name, but really provides advantages to every persona interacting with wherever they fall inside of that proposal or RFP process. To set the stage on what I'm going to walk through today, we, we really kind of categorize the entire platform into four easy consumable chunks. The first part of the demonstration, we're going to talk through our ability to centralize your knowledge. Um, this can be knowledge management, content management, it's called a lot of things out in the marketplace. But at the end of the day, there's a, a ton of pain associated with your standard language, with your repeat uh, questions, with your content having that in disparate locations, disparate systems, it's not centralized, it's not refreshed, it's not easily searchable and findable. And it really, truly, honestly is the foundation for our platform is the ability to give you a, a good way to centralize your content and your knowledge. Once we have that central knowledge library in place, we can now start to do some really cool things with automation and collaboration and leverage that knowledge base. So we'll walk through how to answer a proposal inside of the system, show you those collaboration features, show you some uh, AI and automation to, to hopefully take some of those routine um, repeat boilerplate type responses 
um, as easy as the click of a button. And then we're going to really talk about how we can engage not only our subject matter experts, but engage our fellow proposal team members, marketing team members, how we can engage the partners in a systematic way and, and create an overall better and more efficient way to farm out those questions and, and get that proposal completed. There's some good workflow and collaboration components, as mentioned in the previous two pieces. Uh, we'll hone in on some of those as well. Uh, I know project management, as Matt alluded to, is really important for a lot of the individuals on the phone. So we'll talk um, through in pretty granular detail about now that we have a centralized tool to leverage our knowledge and proposal automation, we can start to provide some reporting and dashboarding that truly gives you that 360 degree view of your proposal landscape and start being able to do some trend analysis and start making some business decisions um, depending upon uh, the results that you're seeing inside of the tool. So this is a, a good way to set the stage on um, kind of what the, the demonstration will look like. And I will uh, navigate over to that today here now and we'll jump right into the tool. And uh, while I'm transitioning, any uh, comments, Matt, before I jump inside of the tool? Yeah, uh, I would just add, you know, because uh, for folks who've seen me speak, a lot of times, you know, when I talk to uh, legal marketers about what to put in your RFPs, I say, hey, you know, you don't want to have just boilerplate language in, in your responses. Um, let's not confuse that with the need for having a standard language repository. I think all law firms need to have one and use, um, you know, certain language for certain questions. Um, what I mean a lot of times is you still want to customize your answers to get them to the point where they're customized to the, to the company that's issuing the RFPs, but you typically want to start with some standard language as your starting point, and then you, you know, whittle it down or customize it to the industry. But I just wanted to make sure folks um, knew that I, you know, even though I'm against too much boilerplate language in your response, there's still a time and a place for it in most responses. Awesome, and I'm looking at uh, my screen to make sure everybody's seeing my demo, so it looks good. So thank you, Matt, that, that's a, a good call out, and I'll talk through some ways to leverage automation, but still be able to put a personalization uh, on that response tailored to um, you know, the line of service, line of business, or uh, your prospect. So what you see here is the landing page for all users inside of the RFP 360 tool. For sake of discussion today, I've created a, a dummy law firm account up here. Um, and this really is the user view, that 30,000 foot view into all the proposals that I'm a part of as part of the proposal landscape. And any individual proposal tasks that have been assigned to me, I can quickly get a user snapshot. I can navigate from these two screens directly into the proposal. These are live links. Um, I can drill directly into the, the proposal tasks that are assigned to me. And this is just a great uh, efficient way for users to land inside of our tool and begin getting to work. Now, one of the key pieces of uh, value propositions of using a tool to consolidate all of your proposals is that you now have the ability to understand from our proposal view here, all of the proposals you have working in the system and understand things like what's the progression, what's the status. Uh, you have the ability to tag these proposals um, in a variety of manners. We'll talk about tags here in a moment. You can always understand a little bit about um, when it was created. You can drill into the source document here. Um, and you can also see what account it lives in. So one of the, the really uh, neat features that a lot of our organizations and firms see a lot of value in is being able to leverage um, what we call account hierarchies to organize and segment not only your proposals, but also your knowledge base and your content. So what you're seeing here is the ability to create these sub accounts and proposals and knowledge can again live inside of these sub accounts. Those users only assigned to these sub-accounts only see the proposals and knowledge associated with that account, right? So it's a great way to not only organize and segment, but some great permissioning. And, but it is true parent-child relationship, meaning if I'm a part of Baylor, Bo, and Milo LLP, I can see all of my child accounts. So just a really great way to start to understand how you can organize your data, organize your proposals, and start to perform some of that trend analysis when we start talking about navigating down here and being able to filter by closed one, closed lost, and start to be able to leverage those tags and that account hierarchy to start to understand where we're seeing wins, where we're seeing losses, uh, and we'll show you a couple different areas to continue that trend analysis. Now, if you remember... So, um, oh, Pat, yeah, go ahead. 
Yep. Uh, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt, but would this be an example where, like, if it was for a particular industry, so within a practice group, like, let's say the RFP was, um, you know, a cyber RFP or a particular type of law, um, you know, folks might be representing the, the fin, you know, uh, managing the fintech practice uh, industry group, the legal marketer could then tag these and then pull them up, right? If they wanted to say, hey, I want to see all the ones we've done uh, that have been tagged fintech. Exactly right. You can navigate a tag here, select the right tag, and then you can filter even more on complete loss, complete one, um, still in progress, any past due. We do track the no bids in here too. So, you know, there's, there's value in understanding what lines of business or RPs you're deciding to pass on. Um, and so you can also track the no bids here from a status perspective. So lots of ways you can tag and organize to be able to answer those questions that you're, you're speaking of. Cool. Great question. Um, so if you remember uh, kind of the first pillar of our platform and our solution is the foundational knowledge base. This is the central repository for you to have searchable, up-to-date, fresh content to leverage uh, across your proposals. Um, you know, once we select a tool to, to centralize our knowledge base, we then can take advantage of using a tool to do that and provide some of these dashboarding across our entire knowledge base um, and knowledge library uh, analytics and give that holistic view across from it. So just from this view, I can see exactly how many um, records I have in the knowledge base. Um, today that uh, knowledge library consists of uh, question and answer pairs. Um, you also can see when that content was created, who's last reviewed the content, who's adding content, what are some of the, the most recent records that were added to the knowledge library. Um, you can do some cool things here to start to track usage so I can understand what pieces of my knowledge library am I using over and over. Um, if there's pieces that are not being leveraged, they can either be purged or we can update or understand if, if uh, we need to be targeting more business associated with that knowledge. Just some, some nice views and data points into the health of our knowledge, the use of our knowledge, and just another uh, value proposition to what you're able to do when you leverage a tool like RFP360 to manage that content. Pat, so, and that, yeah, go ahead. Uh, that brings up a good question. So a lot of times the, the folks who are listening, um, they'll be responding to an RFP, they'll pull a prior answer, and the partner who you know they're working with will say, where did you get that answer? Or let's say it's a matter of description. Um, and a lot of times law firms don't know who the lawyer was who actually worked on that matter. A lot of times they're not even with the firm anymore. But are you saying that with, with your kind of language knowledge database here, it'll tell you who drafted the initial response, like so they could put which lawyer maybe drafted it or approved it and when it happened? Absolutely. Yep. And we can do that here at the knowledge base. And I can show that uh, here shortly, which is we'll, we'll kind of show you the UI to do that. But you can also do that at the proposal level. So I can track who created the content. And then you can track all of that audit and usage as that content is changed and edited inside of the proposal. So we, we, we track everything, including what you just asked for there. And I can tease and show that here in a moment. Got it. Thank you. I think that's really helpful for folks to be able to have that data. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we really track everything in here, including those things. And so I think you'll be pleased with the level of audit uh, trail we do. Um, so this is the knowledge base, uh, the knowledge library. Um, this is the user experience once we consolidate all of our knowledge into the tool, which brings up the first question many will ask. How do I get my current knowledge inside of the application, right? Likely it lives in previous responses. It likely lives uh, maybe inside of an Excel spreadsheet or Google Docs, inside of emails, inside of brains, um, the punchline is it's likely in disparate locations. So we developed three ways uh, with varying levels of automation to make this uh, super seamless. Um, you always have the ability to manually add knowledge, of course, um, but then we've created two mechanisms of automation. One is we create an Excel template to be able to either import um, your current, any current Excel proposals, any current knowledge, but you also have the ability to copy over any of those knowledge records into Excel, into our Excel template, and with the click of a button, it's imported directly into our tool. You can manage tags at that point. You can do a lot of things to create some good metadata associated with that records, uh, and that's as simple as a button click. The third option here, the import existing knowledge, this is probably our most automated and most popular. And so this, what this allows you to do is take any of your previous proposal responses. We, we like to start with um, those previous proposal responses that you've won, um, and we can import those directly in the tool, pull off the question and answer pairs right off of there, and start building your knowledge base. 
um, our customer success team uh, builds the first 250 records for you. Uh, we also provide a, a, some pretty good best, best practice when it comes time to import your knowledge. We like to take the moving analogy. You don't just go in the basement, put everything in a box and move to the new house. We'll sit with you and start to review your current knowledge, make sure that it's in a, a good state to bring into the tool and then you can keep it fresh inside of the tool. So lots of ways to get the knowledge um, inside of our application so you can start leveraging it in a systematic fashion. Um, first thing you have to be able to do is to be able to search uh, on the, uh, the knowledge. So what's nice about our tool is we don't just search on uh, keywords. We actually use the entire phrase. We look at synonyms. We use some artificial intelligence in the background to not only drive our automation, but to also drive our search results. So I've just done a simple search firm background. It's probably a question that comes in every single RFP that you receive. Um, and there's my response. We capture some metadata. So Matt, to your point, right off the bat, we show in this view who created it, when it was last modified, and what subaccount it lives in. And some metadata like does it have a tag, how many times used, is it currently under review? I'll drill into this knowledge record and, and talk through a couple of things that I think will uh, be important to a lot of the folks on the phone. So inside of our text editor, we can support anything that you need to do. Um, so we can, of course, um, do everything you're traditionally used to inside of Word, but you can also embed images, you can embed links, you can embed videos, you can do attachments. Um, quite honestly, anything that you need as part of uh, a knowledge record or as part of a proposal response, we can support within our text editor. You know, I spoke about some of the metadata we capture, and Matt, I think this goes back to um, just some even more granular detail that you were asking before. In, in addition to tracking who's created it and who's edited it, we look at number of times used, we understand how many times it's been edited, we understand how long it's taken to create this knowledge base. And then we also track where you're using this knowledge across your proposal landscape. So you can see in this example, this knowledge base record has been used across these four proposals. You can click links and drill right into that proposal to see where it was used. So we're really trying to not only track the audit around the creation, but we're trying to track the audit around the usage. So, so Pat, that's um, yeah, really that's, interesting. Um, yep. You know, when you just, you, you typed in the word, back, you know, firm background and that popped up, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of times what happens in a law firm is there'll be, you know, an RFP that'll ask for experience with a specific matter. So it'll say like, you know, what's your firm's experience in the ITC court or with a certain regulation where, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of times um, we would end up just doing kind of word searches on prior responses or or even sending an email around to all the lawyers saying, you know, hey, has anybody ever done a, a matter that would fall into this category? Um, so what you're saying is once all these RFPs have been uploaded into the system, they could really just go into that spot where you just were, type in like a certain regulation or uh, ruling, and that'll um, theoretically bring up any time those words have been used in any of the firm's responses globally, right? That's exactly right. And then we will even take it one step further when we, we walk through answering our proposal inside of the system. We'll, our, our intelligence and automation will start to review your knowledge base, review that actual proposal, and start to suggest some potential um, knowledge base records to begin starting crafting your response. So um, you can always do that, uh, call it ad hoc from a search perspective, but a lot of that intelligence is built into the automation too when we get to the proposal piece. Got it. Um, one thing I do want to call out, so when I talk about being able to store more than just words, uh, I like to pull up, um, so just for the sake of discussion, you can store images like I talked about. So many of our organizations and firms will look to store individual bios in here. Um, so again, it truly is a content repository that doesn't necessarily have to only pertain to proposal content. Um, we do not cap the amount of storage that you can have inside of our system. And with the ability to tag it and have those sub accounts, it becomes really easy to, um, to be able to keep it fresh and organized. Let me pop right back into one of these uh, and walk through kind of the review cycle. So part of the advantage of having a centralized uh, tool for your content, your knowledge, is that we can keep it fresh. So directly from the individual knowledge record, I can send this out for Charlie Golden to review it. Let's say I wanted to review it in two weeks and I can set that cycle up to be done every five months. Charlie's gonna get a notification inside of his email at the top of the hour, and then he's gonna get a notification every five months to, to click the link 
come into this knowledge record and review it and approve it and keep it fresh. Um, we're always tracking what happens against that knowledge record. So again, Matt, I'll continue to kind of talk through those audit pieces when they come up. Um, but we're tracking about when was this used in a proposal, who changed it, who last reviewed it. We're, we're, we're passionate about being able to provide the audit trail behind the usage uh, and any changes associated with that. We do provide the ability to do all of that at a bulk action as well. So we most certainly understand, um, you know, it, it becomes potentially tedious to uh, go individually record by record and, and manage things in bulk. So in bulk, um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll navigate back to my, um, I'll just call it my original, my original one here, um, go back to my original knowledge base. And from here, we have the ability to select 25 of these records. I can delete that knowledge in bulk. I can move that knowledge to a different sub account. I can add or remove tags. You can manage reviewers. So now I can send all 25 of these out for review. Uh, the finder in place is very critical. So um, uh, I'll give a real world example here at uh, RFP 360. Uh, we decided as an organization to call our previously named uh, client success team from client success to customer success. So we had to go through and update all of our knowledge records in our own knowledge base to change from client to customer. Um, and that happens from a product change, uh, a new product name. So it's as easy as finding and replacing that word. And you can make those changes uh, broadly across your knowledge base, which is pretty handy when we start making changes and needing to do those types of things. So lots of things we can do to, to keep our knowledge base fresh, keep it reviewed, keep it searchable, keep it organized. Um, and it, it really is the foundation to be able to leverage the rest of the capabilities that we'll walk through here in a moment. Anything on the knowledge library front, Matt, before I transition to kind of answering a proposal inside of the tool? Uh, I just make a quick comment that, you know, I, um, I was always just looking at this tool from the RFP side, but I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if you could use the same function for your chambers responses in the sense of, you know, if you got your firm to upload all your um, representative matters, which are also, you know, called from for RFPs, my guess is you could use the same system and approach with your chamber submissions. Um, not like I want to spend much time on chambers, but just with a pop that, I mean, a thought that popped into my head for the folks on the line. Yep, no, that's a great call out. And, you know, the idea is, you know, we'll walk through answering our proposal. I'll walk through a, a couple different areas just to leverage that knowledge base outside of kind of your proposal landscape. And I'll show you an example. So I'm going to pull up Excel here. I'm looking at Megan in the room to make sure you can see that Excel. Let me share here. Make sure I share the right screen here. So I'm going to pull this up. And what we've decided to do was there is so much value in having this centralized knowledge base that we want you to store more than just proposal content. We really want to be the single source of truth for your knowledge across the enterprise. And so we built what we call uh, extensions to be give our customers access to that knowledge base from directly within Microsoft Office suite of products, as well as Chrome and as well as Firefox. And this can look, uh, you know, one of the main use cases, security questionnaires. We might be getting some things via portals these days. But what's really neat here, I just pulled up an actual security questionnaire that we had to respond to here recently. I can navigate up to the ribbon here. We've embedded that knowledge base that we just set up and searched and talked through. And all I have to do is select a cell. It's actually going to perform a search against that knowledge base. You can perform ad hoc searches inside of here, and you can start to begin to access your knowledge base and plug it directly in um, to these documents. And this becomes really beneficial for those types of use cases that um, you know might require, uh, I'll call it a uh, different level of use case. Maybe you don't need the collaboration, um, maybe something along those lines to where you're, you're being able to access the knowledge base, but you don't need to import that proposal directly. So again, kind of the testament of we, we get questions all the time. Do I, can I use this outside of proposals? Can I store more content than just proposals? And the answer is by all means, yes. And we open those extensions to, to really give you that content and context of whatever application you're using. Okay, yeah, so, so now, uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, um, before you go away from that Excel screen, could you pull that up for a sec, the way you just, um, the, the one you sure. just had? Yep, let me pull um, up and so, get you on. You know, a lot of law firms are getting these questionnaires lately that are, they're not even really RFPs, they're, they're similar to what you have on the screen now, um, whereas a lot of the answers aren't even marketing questions, and, and in some firms, like we had someone in, in an administration function who was answering these. 
Um, was I correct that they just wanted to make sure I stressed this point because this would be an enormous time saver for a lot of the folks on the call. Did all you have to do was click on the cell and it automatically brings up based on whatever time they've answered a similar question, it brings up all the other responses that would be considered for some this question? That's correct. And in Excel, it's selecting the actual cell to perform the search. Inside of PowerPoint and Word, you literally just highlight the question and it performs that search. Um, and the same highlight search capabilities are in Chrome and Firefox. So, you know, we get a lot of security questionnaires via portals these days. And so, you know, it, there isn't even a document to import into a system. So we built this plugin to start accessing those knowledge based questions from right beside the uh, within the browser. And it's been a huge um, time saver for our customers. Yeah, because this would be, you know, just having done hundreds of these myself at a law firm, um, this should be something that's really helpful to legal marketers just because, I mean, we get, almost, you know, such a large volume of these and, you know, a lot of times they're just, like, these are things that can be boilerplate where right. I think what you just showed, I just want to make sure everybody saw that because I would think a lot of folks would find on the call would find that really helpful. Good. No, and uh, that's a good call out, and it's uh, it's been a real big differentiator for us. So, uh, and we use it internally, so I think that's important. <laughs> we answer uh, a lot of uh, proposals ourselves. Funny enough, in what we do. Um, so let's answer a proposal inside the system. Now we kind of understand what it's like to be able to have a tool like this. We've got our centralized knowledge base. Now let's start to leverage collaboration and automation and answer these proposals more efficient than we were before. So to bring a proposal to the system. Uh, you know, we want to collect a couple um, pieces of information. I'm just going to kind of type some uh, some random things in here. Um, if you're a Salesforce user, we do have a Salesforce integration that would pull this information directly from the opportunity record. We provide some additional optional details in here. So you do have the ability to tag it. So I can call, you know, for instance, I don't know how you would tag it, but I'm just making this up. You can make it a litigation tag. So here's where you start to drive some of the metadata associated with it. I always like to say, I always tell my reps to, to put an estimated budget in there in terms of, you know, what's this opportunity worth? Um, and then anything else that you want here, uh, but this is all optional. And then we bring uh, a couple different options to the table to seamlessly bring and import a, a proposal into the system. So we can import Word, Excel, and PDF directly into the tool, right? So we bring in the tool and we'll walk you through that process. But we also know that some organizations and firms live in um, what we call kind of a self-initiated proposal world or a um, proactive proposal world. So in addition to being able to bring those uh, proposals directly into the system, we do allow for you to either create a proposal kind of template from scratch. Um, you can save those as a template and leverage those um, templates to uh, start building, uh, a, I'll call it a proactive proposal um, in a more seamless fashion. You have the ability to store those sections and, and those types of information inside of our content repository. So we really are able to create efficiencies with both kind of that reactive and pro proactive world um, that many of us live in. But for today's uh, webinar and uh, for an introduction, I'm just going to bring in a, a word RFP. Uh, just so uh, everybody kind of uh, is confident in the complexities that we can uh, accommodate, I just went out and grabbed the clock template RFP that I think many corporate legal um, organizations start with as least a framework and, and just wanted to show you that many of these questions might be ones that you receive um, quite often from your corporate prospects. So I'm going to select that document and it's going to import it directly into the tool. And the next step in the process is really for the end user to identify what sections and questions they want to bring in and start working. And so you can see here, you now have the ability to select what information you want to bring into the tool. So all of this is kind of your introduction into the RFP. This doesn't need to be brought into the tool and answered. And you can kind of navigate down to where the questions start. And it's really as simple as identifying, you know, where your sections in this document um, are. And so we navigate down here. Some sections you might not want to bring in, some sections you might want to, but it's really seamless to be able to select those, those, um, those sections and identify what you want to bring in. The next step is we've got to bring in the question. So I can uh, click on each question, which would be pretty tedious across a 100-page proposal. So what we also have developed is we now have the ability to drag and drop and select all the questions uh, that navigated in between those 
um, section. So in 32 seconds there, we brought in three sections and 24 questions just for sake of the discussion. You have the ability to merge questions up if you see questions with A, B, C, and D. So lots of ways to bring this into the tool in a seamless fashion. But again, in 30 seconds, um, brought in three sections and 20 plus questions to now work inside of the tool. So once we import the proposal and we've mapped it out, it's time to answer it, right? And so the first thing that we have our prospects do is to click this Now Edge button. So this is our uh, answer intelligence, this is our AI, this is our automation. And what this does is it goes out and it looks at the proposal questions you just brought in and it looks at your knowledge base and it starts to make some recommendations based upon some different varying levels of confidence. Now, there's always the opportunity to select these uh, suggestions and continue to add color and edits and tailor those inside the tool. But this does put full automation uh, around those questions that are boilerplate that we see over and over again. So this first bucket, auto knowledge, you can see that the uh, artificial intelligence identified that 12 questions met 100% confidence uh, against questions that lived inside the knowledge base. Um, so with a single click of a button, I can answer those 12 questions and get those answered inside of the tool and either approved or to be tailored uh, additionally here in a moment. We also provide some intelligence around what we call multi-knowledge. So this is telling you that you have answered the same question more than one way. And that's really important when we answer different questions, depending upon which uh, line of business, which pro uh, product we're selling, maybe which region. Um, so it, it's really beneficial for the, the software tool to provide the options based upon some of your historical answers. You can make selections here. And again, you can keep those approved or you can navigate back into your outline view. They put those questions into the outline and you can begin to collaborate either on net new questions or making any tailored adjustments or edits to these questions as you see fit. So now we just answered, you know, call it 13 questions, 13 boilerplate questions in here. Um, so now it's time to answer a question that we, we haven't answered before, right? So it doesn't live inside of our knowledge base and we have to leverage our collaboration. So when I click into this question, one thing that it does do is it automatically provides a search using some of those keywords and phrases and synonyms. So it starts to try to get you to double check there isn't anything close that can work or be a start foundation from your knowledge base. So you can always click and use a response directly from the knowledge base. It's going to plug it in right there. But you also have the ability to then execute against our collaboration workflow. So you navigate to this workflow section. Uh, you can choose a writer and approver. So I'll, I'll assign this question uh, out to Charlie Golden. I'll leave myself as an approver. When I hit update assignments, they're going to get a bulk notification at the top of the hour with all of the uh, questions assigned to Charlie as a writer. And then I will get a notification to approve those as it navigates down the hierarchy of approval process. We do have many uh, customers that go outside of the organization for assistance when answering proposals. This might be a consulting firm. This might be a subject matter expert. This might be a vendor. Um, so we developed this act and expert uh, feature to be able to send individual questions via email outside of the tool. That person can then provide their response. They don't have access to the, the platform, your knowledge, the proposal itself but they can provide a response that comes back into the tool for you to approve or edit. And it's just a nice seamless way to engage some of those folks outside of the organization um, to help answer uh, some of those collaborative needs. You can assign it at the question level or the section level. So maybe this entire relationship management section needs to go to Charlie Golden as a default uh, writer. I can update those assignments. And now Charlie gets a notification that all six of those questions in that section fall on his behalf. One, one thing that I will call out here is to save the knowledge base um, button up here on the right-hand side. So after we do that initial knowledge base load of your current knowledge, we are going to build this knowledge base as we're answering proposals in the systems, right? So it effectively gets smarter and more intelligent, uh, and we can leverage automation more and more. So if we come across a net new question, if we choose to, it, is, it can be toggled on or off. If you choose to um, have that net new answer go through approval process and plug into the knowledge base, you do have the ability to build that knowledge base on the fly. So um, just a cool feature as you begin to uh, use and leverage the tool to build out the remainder of your knowledge base. Yeah, um, and I would I, just say, yeah, uh, Pat, I would just add to the folks um, on the line, 
you know, I think this would be really helpful. Like for me, we used to have certain questions that always would have to be approved by our pricing director. Um, you know, and rather than emailing a full response and saying, you know, hey, page 52, paragraph three, we need you to, you know, approve this language. Um, you know, being able to have it automatically go to them and have a, a, a you know, a deadline that pops up on that, I, I would think would be a lot, of, a lot helpful for you guys. No, and that's a great call and a great addition, Matt. One thing I did want to call out is I just want to type in Bruce Smith's bio, and you can, again, with the click of a button, pull in, you know, uh, more than just uh, text content into this application. Um, so, again, just a, a cool, seamless way to leverage your knowledge base. The idea is we're leveraging collaboration, we're leveraging automation where we can, we're tailoring the responses where we need, and we're just being more efficient with how we're answering the proposal. And Matt, to your kind of opening statement around uh, interest around project management, you know, we've shown some ways to kind of track the end user as well as your proposal, proposal landscape, but we put a lot of emphasis into some metrics and dashboarding at the individual project level. So for this uh, uh, webinar test RFP, uh, you can drill into understanding how many questions have been started or in progress or complete, how many are out for approval. You can understand the completion process. I can come in here and say, okay, all of those assignments I've put out to Charlie Golden, what is the status of those? What's the approval process? I can understand what are my specific tasks associated with this project. Um, you can always track any activity that happens inside of the project itself, any notifications or messages that you might get. We do have a messaging uh, consult uh, compartment here to where you can message your entire team, a single team member, um, so again, lots of ways to not only be more efficient in the way we answer uh, these proposals, but also the way we collaborate and the way we project manage um, our proposals from start to finish. So just some additional project management dashboarding at the individual project level. So if we fast forward just for sake of time, you know, we, we collaborate, we get all of our questions approved and answered. Um, the export and delivery becomes the next logical step and the next area for efficiency. So we have made this very seamless for our customers to be able to take all of their um, proposal responses and export them very seamlessly. So we provide um, really three different export options depending upon the format of the original RFP. So within the click of a button, I can take all of those answers and I can plop them right back into the RFP that I received, the original RFP format. So I'm going to do that for you so you can see that. So uh, what's nice too is if there's any attachments with your response, we zip those up as part of the zip drive as well. And I'll open this up. You know, obviously we answered just a couple of questions, but when I pull up this response, you'll see that this was the um, you know, clock template RFP that I just pulled down from the internet. Um, and here is their boilerplate uh, information. And then when I start to navigate to the questions, you can start to see that all of those questions that I answered inside the tool are put right back in the appropriate section. I'm trying to navigate down here to see um, if we have any more sections in there. So you can see we're able to take those, you know, 13 questions that we answered and put those right back in uh, to the original format. So the idea of pasting and copying and pasting and having to circulate uh, the original format to get the answers, we collaborate inside the tool and then we provide consistent formatting and consistent um, output of those answers directly back into the original document. The, the next option for our customers is a lot of us have, a, I'll call it a customized template uh, that we put all our responses into and how we submit our proposals if it's not a requirement for us to use the original format. So we support the ability for you to build these custom templates inside of the tool. Um, you know, we can add table contents and numbering, your logos, um, you know, headers, all that kind of information. Well, we build the first template for you and with you as part of the onboarding experience. Um, and we've built one just for, for demo purposes, and I'll export uh, those same questions into our template now, so you can kind of see a little bit of the art of the possible around um, the template. Um, but when you build that template, the idea is to really take some of that boilerplate imagery and uh, opening slides or whatever uh, might be done today, we can boil, boilerplate that into the template. And then when I navigate past the table of contents, you can see those answers that we just answered inside of the tool are plopped right directly into um, a uh, tailored output. So uh, lots of systematic ways to get everything out of the system after we've collaborated on it uh, and get it submitted. Um, just a seamless way to, to do that final piece of the puzzle and get it submitted uh, to hopefully win the new business. 
any questions, Matt, or any comments um, before I navigate to the final piece around some of the, the metrics around tracking kind of time spent versus time saved? Uh, no, why don't you jump to that and then I've, I've got okay. some questions that I think will come in after that. Perfect. Um, so, you know, we've talked a little bit about being able to trend on, you know, what proposals are we winning and what areas, understand what the status, understand where we're losing our knowledge. So providing some trend analysis around the usage around the content. Um, but we also want to uh, kind of map out, quite honestly, the value that you're seeing inside the tool. So we track uh, a concept called time spent versus time saved across um, companies across users and across proposals and at the end of the day what we are actually tracking here is the time spent in manually creating knowledge and manually um, interacting with the proposal answers and then we track how much time that user is saving or that proposal is being saved by leveraging automation in the knowledge base so it's a real um, kind of linear uh, binary response in the fact that here's how much time it took to create those things and here's how much time you spent leveraging knowledge and the knowledge base and it just gives you a good snapshot into um, kind of where you're spending the most time where you're saving the most time and again that can be done at the individual proposal level so um, I'm tracking how much total time was spent inside the proposal and how much total time was saved by leveraging uh, automation. So I'll kind of pause there and I know Matt you had some questions or some color there and uh, I'll pause. Yeah, so um, here's the piece where I, I think, um, I don't know if, if you guys are using it right now in this way, but I could see it being used by law firms, or, or if not in its current version, you know, at some point. But, like, it's really important for the legal marketers to be able to measure how much time they spend on RFPs because when they need to try to say no to responding to an RFP, um, they need some kind of leverage against the partner or whoever's making the decision. So if they're able to say, you know, this is how much time we've spent on a particular RFP um, or, or things like that. Now, it doesn't look like it's exactly, you know, what I'm thinking as far as measuring the total time on the RFP, but it seems like generally speaking that the software product does measure the amount of time spent on an RFP Am I correct in saying that like a, a legal marketer could, you know, at the end of the year or whatever time period, look at their RFPs and say, hey, you know, we've either reduced our time from 100 hours to 50 hours or even does it allow you the ability to say, to show management, okay, you know, um, for, for these types of RFPs, we, they typically take this X amount of hours. And maybe it doesn't. I just want to make that clear to the audience what it does and doesn't do that. No, great question. So I, I think we can do some of that. Um, you know, the what we track is the interaction with inside the tool. So what we can't capture is obviously the time things happen outside of the tool. But at the very least, we, we really want to prove two things. We obviously want to prove that we can do it more efficient and faster than your traditional way. But then secondly, we want to provide a next layer of granularity around where you're actually spending the time at the individual user and proposal level so you can start to make some business decisions depending upon that. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and you know, another, I saw one of the questions just popped up. Somebody made another good point. If you want to, are trying to get more resources from management to be able to say, hey, I want to hire somebody else or, um, you know, we, we need more people on the RFP side of the team. Um, I just think any way that you can track what your what the team is spending their time on can only help you supporting whether it's a push for more resources or a push for saying no to an RFP or a push for saying yes to an RFP. The more data, I, I found lawyers don't really listen to suggestions as much as they listen to suggestions with evidence supporting them. So I would think this would be helpful for a lot of the legal marketing. Absolutely. And, and, and Matt, one thing I wanted to go back to, uh, Megan, let me know my, the, the exports went off under my second screen. So you, you, you folks didn't get to see the actual output. So, you know, you saw me clicking that single button. So this is, gives you an art of the possible around how we can support some of your templating. So again, table of contents, boilerplate information, and then you'll scroll down here and you'll see, here's the responses that we, we answered together inside of the tool. 
Um, and so again, a good seamless way just to be able to pop those answers right into a custom template. And again, this is customized to your styling and to your needs. And then just so I can close the loop as well, um, I wanted to show you that we can also show you the output of we've taken what was that clock template RFP that I used for the demo today. And you can scroll down to the question and answer period and you can start to see here's the, the answers that we answered inside the tool. So it truly is the ability to hit one button and, and spit the answers right back into the original RFP and, and you're off and running. So I apologize, I, I popped those onto the, the wrong screen there. Yeah, well, so, one thing I'll notice yeah, right. is uh, we should point out they're a Kansas City-based company because I just saw Patrick Mahomes' was name floating around in there. Um, <laughs> that, that's but right. we, won't, we won't hold that against you. But no. <laughs> I, I, after barbecue, we have to find something else to root for. He's been easy to do that, so. Got it. Um, well, no, I mean, I think, you know, the way that I look at this is, particularly if you're a law firm that does more than, you know, five RFPs a year, say, um, some law firms have them spread out across where every manager, you know, in their section, you know, um, is in charge of RFPs. And other law firms have one or two or three or more specific people whose role is solely RFPs. I, I personally think that it could work both ways because if I'm if I'm managing them for my whole firm, I think like having a dashboard and to be able to pull up and report this type of thing um, is great. But he, but I also like the idea of if I'm in charge of the RPs, but each practice group has folks working on their own, this kind of gives you uh, the management perspective of hey, I can actually see how the other RFPs are doing even if they're not ones that I'm working on. So whether you're the CMO or you might be, you know, a proposal director or a proposal specialist, I think it's pretty cool to, know, to be able to look at not just the, the ones that you physically have done, but the folks on your team have done. Um, so that was another point I brought, I, I brought up. I mean, um, I, I think um, from, from what I saw, it would work well, you know, with the RFPs that we did, but I wanted to open up to see if there are any questions came in from folks who might have been on the um, the Q&A portion. Yep, Matt, and I have one here. So somebody asked about, um, you know, who can leverage the tool in terms of, um, you know, can attorneys and lawyers and, and people across the organization leverage it? So the answer is we provide a tool for you to foster collaboration and to go out and answer as many proposals as you can to win new business. And we don't um, put a cap on either of those from a licensing perspective. So uh, the tool comes with unlimited users. Of course, there's different role types and permissions that we can always talk about that makes sense per user, but it's unlimited users and unlimited content storage and unlimited proposals. So it really is the opportunity to kind of um, leverage those value propositions and try to maximize all three of those things inside of your own firm. Got it. And, um, you know, I'm just trying to think if I was in these guys, you know, spot, what I would want to know, um, is there a way to give them a general pricing idea? You know, do they have to buy, is it one for the whole firm? Does it go by number of, you know, licenses by people on the team? Does it go for the whole, you know, can anybody in the firm use it? If you could just kind of touch on that, I think that might help. Because my guess is ultimately a lot of the folks listening, if they like this, are going to have to sell it internally to get it approved. So the more, the more that they can kind of get a, even just a general understanding. Yeah, no, it's a great question and, and, and price is important. So um, we, we really do have that simplistic pricing model in the sense that um, you pay an annual fee and you get access to the entire platform as well as unlimited users, content storage and proposal imports inside of the tool. Um, you know, each, you know, there's, there's, uh, products and solutions inside of this entire platform that may or may not make sense to your exact use case. Um, so, you know, the pricing we can most certainly share uh, with you offline. Um, but the, the punchline is we try to make it as seamless as possible that um, based upon your use case, we sell you the products and services that you need, but it's uncapped across those three pillars, which is a, a big differentiator for us. Got it. So is that a long way of saying if they connect with you offline and, and, and said, hey, this is the size of our firm or number of people who might use it, you would at least be able to give them ballpark, say, you know, that, it might, yeah. even, even if it's not exactly, yeah. A hundred percent. And we wouldn't put you through, you know, the 
you know, the, the full process. If you just reach out to us, we'll, we'll get some information to make sure we're not including something that isn't of value to you and we can get you a round number pretty quick. Okay, good. I think that's, you know, that's important for folks. Um, but, you know, I think that was, that was all I was going to cover. Um, so I don't have any more questions. Um, you know, again, I would just say to folks, um, uh, you, we're going to see more and more RFPs. Um, it's absolutely already happening, but you're just going to see it continue to grow. And if you are in charge of doing them, um, you know, I think there are either tools like this or other ones in the market that have come a long ways in the last five years where if you're still using a word, Excel doc manually ch chasing emails down, like sending people uh, word documents to red line throughout the whole process. And then you got to, you know, dump it back into the original document. Um, I just think that you're, you know, wasting a lot of time. If you can get the firm to invest in a technology like this, I think you guys might, um, you know, find the whole process more enjoyable. Um, but no, that was it for me, Pat. Uh, you let me know if there's anything else you want to do on the wrap up. No, that works. Uh, I, I think we're, I want to make sure we're cognizant that we're at the top of the hour. So I think there's a couple of questions in here that we'll follow up individually. Um, again, we'd, we'd love for you to, to reach out if you want a tailored demonstration. There's, there's obviously pretty high level today. We can discuss something more tailored, discuss the pricing. We really, truly appreciate the time and I'll, I'll hand it over to Megan to, to wrap.